I am Les Crowder, I'm a top bar beekeeper and I've been keeping bees since I was 15 or so, uh, which is about 40 plus years ago. Um, I always, had, my grandpa was an organic gardener back in those days and I was always interested in um, how to raise food without poison, basically. Uh, we can call a pesticide a pesticide, but if it would just kill pests, that'd be cool, but often it winds up killing bees and other things. And I, I was determined to try to keep bees without antibiotics right from the beginning. Um, and I, I, over the years, I, I worked for a commercial beekeeper. We had 4,000 hives in New Mexico. And I realized that I didn't really like that kind of beekeeping. Also, he was raising bees for honey production, putting it in barrels, and it just got to where it wasn't making any money. So you either had to go to pollination or kind of get out of it. And mobile pollination is really hard work. Um, that's a wonderful thing that people are doing it because that's how we eat. But it's it's really hard work. And um, so I became honeybee inspector for New Mexico Department of Agriculture for a few years as a temporary uh, summertime job and learned a lot there. But I basically I've been working on how to keep bees without miticides, fungicides, Fumadil B for instance, um, without antibiotics, and try to keep bees healthy and let bees be bees, you know. Um, I, I got onto top bar hives because I thought it was fascinating to let them build their own comb. And that there, I really wanted to get away from the frame. The frame is delicate, it's expensive, it seems like they hold they don't hold together very well. They break easily, they get glued in, and they're thin little pieces of wood you nail into the grain. It, it's A lot of things about frames didn't make sense to me. Also, when you lift a frame, the frame is right next to the box, but when you lift it, it's pretty hard not to do this and crush bees. And I noticed that I like to work without gloves, I wear a veil, but as soon as you crush bees, you the mood of the hive gets a little bit more mad, you know. And so I try to minimize crushing bees. Also, I feel like we shouldn't be crushing bees. We're beekeepers, not, we shouldn't be killing bees, right? Um, and so with a top bar hive, you, you lift it straight away. There, It's just a bar. You can use the same bar over and over for many, many years. There's nothing to break, you know. And it's just really cheap. The top bar hives can, I've made top bar hives out of plastic blue barrels, glass, wicker, lots of different materials, mud, adobe mud. Um, and so I, I thought, well, these are kind of cool. And I experimented with them for a lot of years. And then one year I lost a lot of bees to the varroa mite. And I, my Langstroth equipment was wearing out and I decided I would, um, try 30 top bar hives as a business experiment because they were so cheap I could make them for almost nothing. Put together a bunch of scrap lumber and it did well. You know, I bought some packages. They weren't all so great, but I got by, I made some honey and I paid for everything and made a little profit. And then I thought, well, then I could go ahead and reinvest in my Langstroth equipment. And then I thought, yeah, but I could have twice as many or 10 times as many top bar hives for the same investment. So. I built more top bar hives and basically have never looked back. Recently I helped a friend of mine who bought some of my old Langsworth equipment and he's still using it, I can't believe it. And he asked me, he said, does this kind of make you feel like going back to Langstroth? And I said, no, actually, it makes me feel like, boy, I'm glad I don't have to do this anymore. It's so nice to just not have to mess with the frames and lift the combs out and not crush bees. And, um, and then I don't ex have to extract, I just go out to the bee yard with my buckets, brush the bees off the combs, cut it into the bucket, put the top bar right back, crush the comb, pour it over a strainer, and then bottle it. And I melt the wax, and I lose a little honey production, I gain a lot of wax production. The wax I make money with because I can make salve and lip balm and I can sell it to herbalists. Um, herbalists really like treatment free beeswax because a lot of our treatments contaminate the beeswax and they don't want to make lip balm with pesticide in it 
<clears throat> sometimes there's enough miticide in our beeswax that it can actually kill the bees. So how much of that do you want on your lips or your kids' lips, you know? So I, I feel like top bar hives have a place in the world. They they were first started in the early the mid 70s and for years I was the only one I knew and then I knew one other guy and then a few other guy people. It seemed like when women started really coming into beekeeping, a lot of them gravitated to top bar hives for a number of reasons. One, that you don't lift heavy boxes. But for whatever reason, women just seem to feel like it's, they just feel more attracted to top bar hives. They feel like they're more natural. I got into a little controversy with D, over, D Lesby over the cell size because I let my bees build their own and they turn, if you let them build their own, they build a variety of cell sizes. And she felt like they should be on small cell size. And I, I guess I call myself the permissive beekeeper. I let them build whatever they want. You figure, how would I know what's the right cell size? And I don't try to, my bees don't try to regress me into small shoes. They let me wear whatever size I want. So I'm gonna let them live in whatever size they want. One of the objections I've heard is, well, then they might build a whole sheet of drone comb. I said, yep, they might. Well, drones don't make honey. I don't know why they want so many drones certain times of the year, but what's wrong with letting them have what they want? In other words, we should let bees do their own thing, be their own self, and let them thrive in that way. Not, not dictate to them, oh, you can't have any drones. So, I've often thought that if I were to change my website name, it would be might be the Permissive Beekeeper, but um, I'm, I'm seeing just a huge expansion in natural beekeeping. Not always, not just top bar hives, any kind of hive or Langstroth hives, but where, where people don't want to use poisons or you know toxic inputs in the beehive um, but, and that's true of course throughout agriculture we're seeing grass-fed beef coming back grass-fed dairies uh, people want food that isn't poisonous and um, that includes honey and, and people want to raise bees in a sustainable healthy way mm -hmm.